You're listening to the Sunnybrook Unscripted Podcast, where we talk real life, answer questions, and take a deeper, practical look at the topics we talk about on a Sunday morning. To learn more about Sunnybrook Church, including our Sunday gathering times and opportunities throughout the week, visit us online at sunnybrookchurch.org. Today, we are talking with Pastor Jeff Mose. Well, welcome or welcome back to the Sunnybrook Unscripted Podcast. I am Lydia Miller here with Pastor Jeff. We have been taking a look in this series at the attributes of God, some of which we have been talking about on Sunday morning in our series, God Is, and some that we are talking about just here in this podcast because there are so many attributes of God to cover. We probably won't cover anywhere close to all of the ones that we know. No, it's limitless when you begin to talk mm-hmm. about God. Mm-hmm. So today we're taking a look at, we've we've thrown some big words out there, omnipotence, omniscience. Today we get to talk about goodness. So this one feels like it will be Seems easy. an easier subject. So although we maybe don't necessarily need a definition of goodness, give us a definition of what goodness looks like for God. Yeah, I think this is really all-encompassing of all of the attributes. So sort of this overarching thing that brings all up together, not only in who he is, but how he operates. So I I would say all of the attributes of God are sort of encompassed in this idea of his goodness. Uh, Again, good just meaning, uh, you know, perfect and positive and right and best and all of those kinds of things, which I'm sure as we walk through this, we'll define in greater ways. But just a reminder that God is good. Remember we used to sing that song, just the same words over and over again. God is so good. God is so good. But it's incredible theology. It really is. It encompasses all of the attributes of God every time you sing those simple words. What do you say, I found this to be true in my own life and people that I've talked to, that anytime you're struggling with God, it typically boils down to struggling with the goodness of God and, and the truth of this characteristic. I think that's absolutely right, Lydia. I, I think from the very beginning of time, that's been our struggle. Remember the temptation that comes from the evil one toward Eve, if she'd eat of this fruit. And then sort of the kicker with it was this idea, hey, God's not being good to you. Uh, what he's being is selfish. He's kind of withholding from you. And if you eat of this fruit, you'll have all the goodness that God has as well. So I think from the very beginning of time, one of our biggest struggles has been the goodness of God, especially when life doesn't go the way we want it to. Then all of a sudden we begin to question, is God really good? He is. There's no question about it. But how we often define goodness might be different than how Scripture does. Which is so interesting because if you boil it all the way back, there really is no goodness apart from God. That not only is God all good, but all goodness comes from God as well. That's the biggest thing I think we need to understand in this characteristics of God is that goodness comes, sort of emits from the very presence of God. Uh, The psalmist talked about it. Psalm 119 said, listen, God, you are good. And then he says this, you do good. Uh, If I could give you a New Testament passage, give me James chapter one, where he says, listen, every good and perfect gift comes down from the father of lights where there is no shifting or shadows. There's this sense in which he's always good. The problem is, and I think this is where we struggle sometimes because somebody say, "Well, well, listen, if it feels good, do it. Remember that model? And, and, and what feels good to us is not always good before God. I mean, drugs for a, a small amount of time can feel good. They're not good for you. Ice cream, which I love. I don't know if I mentioned to you I was on a diet. Uh, <laughs> Only every minute of every day. But ice cream, which is very good, it's not always good for you. So, And often the things that are good for me in terms of food yep. uh, aren't always the things that taste the best. But That's one of the things we have to understand about God is goodness emits from him, but he recognizes what's good and what's not. And and again, he can't deny himself or his character and his character being good. So again, he can't do the things that are not good. Yep. And our ability to skew goodness is as old as the world itself, because that's really what boiled down to Adam and Eve and how we got in this whole mess in the first place for centuries, years, as long as the world has been here, we have skewed what goodness truly is, even though there's all sorts of stories in scripture that Absolutely. make it clear. And, and isn't that what temptation is all about? Mm-hmm. It's it's about what feels good for me or feels right for me. I'm not going to check with God's word. I'm not going to check with what's right with regards to the character of God. 
what I want is what feels good. And that's what always gets us into trouble. Mm-hmm. So how do we tap into understanding the true goodness of God? Where can we look? What can we read? How can we get a better understanding, some wisdom when it comes to goodness and the very goodness of God? I think there's just all sorts of scripture that deal with this issue of the goodness of God. I I certainly think we're going to see it in creation. We're going to see it as the world begins and he looks back every time. And what does he say? It is good. He comes to the pinnacle of mankind, the creation of man. And he says, listen, He's very good, created in my image, so it starts at the very beginning of time. Then we see even the struggle of mankind, and we see the deliverance of God, his goodness in that. We certainly see it in the coming of Christ, and certainly this little baby who eventually makes his way to the cross of Calvary, but we see the goodness of God in that. When time comes to a close, we're going to see the goodness of God appear again and change everything in this world. I think when you walk through the stories of Scripture— you can't help but be struck with the goodness and the character of God. And I think when you see that and you recognize you can trust it, I just think you're going to lean into that a little bit more. And I think day by day you're going to be changed by that. Because usually we'll recognize on the other side that the goodness of God is present even when it feels like a prayer isn't being answered or it feels like things aren't going the way we want them to be, that that really it is an overflow of God's goodness. It's his patience. It's his um, ability to see into the future in a way that you cannot. All of that. Yeah. I, I think all of that describes just the goodness of God. Let, let's talk about one that you just mentioned for a moment, the patience of God. People don't often think about this, but if God is holy and perfect and righteous and he looks down at mankind, uh, there's got to be a sense in which he's frustrated. The wrath, the holy wrath of God has got to be indignant toward mankind and Uh, his sin. But the fact that he is long-suffering, Scripture talks about, the fact that he is patient, not willing, as Peter talks about, for any to perish, just shows again the goodness of God. Uh, If you think about it, there's only two times in Scripture that God loses his patience in a big way. One would be at the flood, where he drowns, you know, everyone because he said, listen, I'm sorry you've been made this creation. But you see the goodness of God in the, the family of Noah, the one righteous people. And again, that's sort of this adumbration, this foreshadowing of the coming of Christ and how he's going to save people. But out of that, we see the patience of God. The only other time we see it is in the cross of Calvary, when, in a sense, the dam of God patience breaks and it drowns Christ in a sea of sin. But otherwise, God is incredibly patient uh, with his children, not wishing that any should perish. So, He's good and he's gracious in that. We also talked a little bit before about just the goodness and his provision for us as well. Yeah, if you think about it, on a daily basis, he provides. Mm -hmm. All of creation, we forget this often, Mm -hmm. but was given to Adam and Eve and said, listen, here's what I want you to do. There's there's all kinds, thousands, I'm sure, of trees in the garden. There's only one that you can't. He provided incredible provision for them. So on a daily basis, you and I see the goodness of God in that he provides shelter and clothing and food. It's one of the reasons we get into the hope care ministry. Uh, Again, we see ourselves as the hands and feet of Christ to be able to help with those kinds of needs. But on a daily basis, why we go to prayer? It's why your little boys uh, love to pray before a meal. That's uh, because we just want to acknowledge in a moment like this is, as we sort of say grace or bless the food, which is saying, God, we recognize everything comes from your hand. You, you provide in every way for us. So on a daily basis, uh, he just meets every single one of those needs. I found in my own life that the more intentional time I spend in prayer, the more aware I am of the goodness of God in my own life. When I actually take time to sit and to pray about my day, the things that I need, what's going on, the more I feel like I just have this attention towards all of the little and different ways that the goodness of God is showing up. Yep. And I I think that's true in life. I think the more we move into the presence of his goodness, the more we recognize how good he is. And you know this from social media and everything else in the world is when you measure yourself up with the world, you're going to always feel sort of uh, left out, shorted, uh, those kinds of things, because you're measuring your you know, graciousness with what other people have. And, and I think you always feel as though you, you, you lack in that area. But I think the more you lean into the presence of God, the more you spend time in prayer, the more you understand the character of God. It's mm-hmm. one of the reasons we're going through the attributes of God. The more you begin to recognize, wow, 
Uh, he is good. He is gracious. He is kind to me. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like you have to view, you kind of mentioned this at the very beginning, you have to view all of the other characteristics of God in light of his goodness, that if he were just all-knowing or just all-powerful, then you would lose so much of what that means. It would become almost an intimidating characteristic when before all of that goes the goodness of God, and then with that comes all-knowing and all-powerful. I think that's a very good point again. I, I think if you thought of somebody with all power, but they weren't good, that could be destructive. If you think of somebody with all knowledge, or, or, or had the ability to be everywhere at all times, but they weren't good, that would be very intimidating, painful, difficult for us. But yeah, that's why this is sort of this overarching theme, the one that encompasses all that, that he's good. We're going to talk about the goodness of God, focus a little bit more on God as a refuge and all of those things in the coming series. So make sure that if this is something you want to dive into a little bit more, you can Either watch that service on YouTube, on KTIV, or come on Sunday morning as well. We've got a few weeks left in this series, and it's been it's been a good one. Well, thanks for tuning in this week. We'll be back next week with more of the characteristics of God. If you were encouraged by today's talk, be sure to rate us and hit subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you stream your podcast. To experience other talks, videos, and live gatherings, visit us online at sunnybrookchurch.org or download the Sunnybrook Church app. And again, thanks for listening to the Sunnybrook Community Church Podcast.